everybody, Kay here on the homestead. Well, I promised to give you a seedling update. And so, I just walked around and showed all the trays and I'm gonna show it to you now. I am sitting out on the uh, back porch where I have the plantings that I just did in video before last. <laughs> I uploaded a video this morning. And I hope you get a chance to see it because a lot of people love my garden tour videos with music. And it was at times gently raining and, and, other, and others just not raining. And so you could just hear the birds singing and I just wanted to put you in a very peaceful mental state going into the weekend tomorrow. <laughs> So I hope you enjoy that and take a look at my seedlings in the house. I think I have about 20 trays, but I've had a major aphid infestation. And if you, if you haven't had one, you really haven't lived. <laughs> you know that expression, you haven't lived until you've had an aphid infestation. You probably heard that a lot. Okay, folks, this is just reality when you turn your so-called dining room into a potting up shed. Seeding trays, potting up. I've got to pot up some tomatoes in a tray over there. A table's got to be cleaned off. And before this afternoon is over, all these seeds that are on the floor spread out are going to be put away. I just want to show you some of my trays. I've only got one grow light here, but having the two walls there, it does reflect quite a bit. And so I've got this I'm excited about because it's the first time I've actually grown ground cherry out and it looks really good. And I've also got tomatilla, which I haven't had in years. I never should have potted up tomatoes into six cell. These little things are six cells, and I should have done the four cells. Now I've got to pot them up again. This is that Formosa lily, if you can believe. One of the first things I planted, but it's not dead, so. <laughs> and this is a gorgeous, I want to say this is, oh yeah, here's the tag. This is a Carol. Maverick Geranium. This is a gift from Jamie. And it was just four tiny little things when she gave it to me. And it's just, it's the healthiest looking thing I have. I think it needs water pretty soon. Here I have all my peppers are right here. I'm not growing that many. All the peppers that I seeded. And then a few tomatoes behind there. And then over here, I have, well, let's see, that's Anna's hyssop, which comes up here naturally. I don't even have to. But this is, I want to say this is, oh, this is fennel. That needs water. And this is um, either bergamot or bee balm. Let's see. Pretty sure it's yeah, that's bee balm. This is my um, chives. They need they actually need water. Very excited about this, and I don't need this many, but this is what I planted, and they all came up. This is fenugreek. Never grown it before. Very excited, and this is basil leaf, and it's almost like a fluke. You'll have one that looks just like genovese, and the very next, all the others will be all puckered, and then you'll have normal, normal, and then puckered, puckered, puckered. So I think uh, it's just an anomaly. This is one of my figs. Hopefully I'll get more, but this is the, the one so far that's come up. Scott's yellow. And here are some when I see anything shiny on leaves, oh my gosh! 
Yes, yes, yes. Aphids. Aphids on the pepper. This is going to have to be seriously dealt with. And there's a bunch of them in the little... They love to get in those tiny little leaves. I think I can save those, but I want to get that out of here before it migrates, gets out of control. Yeah, this is... Um, I want to say this is bee balm also, and that's regular basil. And some tomatoes in here. I don't know why I've got yellow leaves dropping. It's, it, you know, they get to where they just need to be put out, and then you're just keeping them in the greenhouse, and it's very hard. This whole tray of tomatoes is going to get some of them potted up and some of them eliminated. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, more of the same. I've got some uh, white star, white Texas, let's see, Texas white star or white Texas star um, hibiscus. And this is Cubanelle pepper. Uh, they're struggling. Between the aphids and just being in these little pots too long. All right, so and I've got another tray down here with just one little light. It's not sufficient, but let's check out the ones by the windows. Over here, I have my other figs, and I'm going to have to check those again today and make sure nothing else has popped open. And I've got a couple of things down here I need to rearrange. I need to put away, rearrange, clean, organize. And look how dark it is. What a storm. Okay, so here are my two trays of Sweet Annie. Gosh, I probably have at least 80 good ones there. <laughs> this is the tray I just planted of the baby greens. And then here are some zinnias. I will never seed zinnia again. And here are some grapevines that I pruned from the prune from the clippings. I took them off the clippings. Yeah, let's go out to the garage and I'll show you the uh, the major aphid problem. Okay, so I have one stand here with just one grow light. And I've kind of got these separated so the light goes down and hits the two big ones down below. This is the loofah and this is the roselle. I started it way too soon. They really need to get outside. All of this shiny stuff you see is the honeydew from the aphids. That is what they excrete, to put it politely. And you can really see it here. See that shiny stuff? And they were all over the loofah, and I cleaned every leaf and sprayed every leaf front and back on here, just hoping they would survive. This is the calendula, and evidently aphids love calendula. Look at this. You rarely see an adult with wings. It's hard to see it, but that's the adult looking after all of the... Uh, babies, eggs, and nymphs. At least it was some kind of an adult. Got lots of stuff here. All these need to be cleaned, but you know what? Aha, and look, see? There's a stink bug, and I'm just hoping that it is eating the Oh my goodness, this, this, this is so discouraging. This was my gorgeous, gorgeous eggplant, absolutely covered, absolutely covered in nymphs and eggs. There's no way one stink bug could eat all of this. Look at this, it's covered, all those little white specks.
So, so far, I guess they're ignoring the cilantro. Got one or two, and then this tomato. This part of this tomato looks okay, but um, it looks like it attacked these curled up leaves or puckered leaves are a good sign of aphid infestation. The salvia looks okay. I hope it survives. I think I'll put this out in the rain. I mean, it can't hurt. Aphids are, well, they are sucking insects and they suck the fluid out of your plants and leave only honeydew coming out there back in, dripping down on everything else. <laughs> so, it's very challenging. I don't know how many eggs a flying aphid, now there are only a few flying aphids, and I'm assuming they're egg-laying only, but maybe they're flying male aphids also, don't know. Don't remember. But two things I wanted to mention. When I first started, I had, uh, um, you know, I had a team of four women, and we collaborated. I paid them. We collaborated, and I made the first uh, 100 videos with them, and it was awesome, and I loved it. It's a very different uh, workflow because I only did two videos per month and they were between five and eight minutes. And so everything changed in 2016 with YouTube. And so it was not, uh, I mean, I couldn't have kept doing it anyway. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I was happy that uh, the editor and sound editor were starting new careers and I was happy to give them a credit. And I put the entire 100 episodes on IMDb, which is the movie uh, and television database. And so, you know, somebody could, I don't know if they still use that credit because that was a while ago. But at any rate, I was happy to do that. And in 16, I went out on my own and tried, you know, to do the editing and learn, quickly learn how to edit and all that stuff. And I, I always said I would never edit. But, uh, you know, you have to do everything yourself if you want to have any money at the end of the day, so. <laughs> anyway, at the time I had a motion graphics artist, and she would just do, if I had an idea, she would make me a 30 second animation. And so I had her do one on aphids. And the other thing I wanted to mention is I had an opportunity to meet the head of the biology department and also he was in charge of all of the specimens at the University of California Northridge. And I went out and did a video with him and it's very interesting. And uh, I'm going to put the link right up here and I hope you go back and watch that. He's, he's funny and, and we had a, a great conversation. He did most of the talking. Uh, the reason that I happened to make his acquaintance was because I discovered a tiny blue metallic. It looked like the uh, those helmets from the old the or, old war helmets, you know, just <laughs> uh, metallic blue ladybug, lady beetle, in my late bloomer 1.0 garden. And I took it out there, and he had he did not have one of those specimens, so it went into the collection in Cal State Northridge, which is which was a, a, a <laughs> really exciting for me to you know discover something that they hadn't discovered before. So I hope you go back and watch that video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks so much for being a part of my channel. I hope you subscribe if you haven't already. I share my life with cats on a nine acre homestead in Tennessee. And all the challenges and all the harvests and all the cooking and all the fun. <laughs> 
So if that interests you, I hope you will subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye, aphids. Just go away. Just get washed away. Okay, here are a few squash that I planted. Uh, I did kusha. Kusha is my, one of my favorites, and butternut's the other. I think those are the two of my favorites, but I'm also going to try to grow Guatemalan blue again. And so I think, yeah, so those two are Guatemalan blue, and these are butternut, and these four are kusha. Now, this is a plastic container, and I'm trying the biodegradable also, because squash, really any cucurbit, but especially squash, does not like to be transplanted. And I just went ahead and started it because we have so much rain, it's impossible to get the big tiller in the garden and get it ready. So, and anyway, we might have another freeze, and squash would not like that. So, I'm starting them in here and see how it goes.